Things went haywire right from the get-go when Christine McVie joined the Fleetwood Mac band, all thanks to wild sex scandals and cheating affairs. Everyone was screwing everyone. And then she suddenly decided to leave the band posing it's due to her fear of flying and to spend time with her family. But is that all there is to it? Or does it also have something to do with the sex escapade going on behind the scenes? This is the untold sex life of Christy McVie. Christine met her first husband, John McVie, in 1968. At the time, he was the bassist and one of the lead members of Fleetwood Mac. The original lineup also included drummer Mick Fleetwood and guitarist Peter Green. Back then, Christine was still going by her maiden name, Perfect. By the time she met John, she was playing keyboard and singing in a blues band called Chicken Shack. Her first love interest, however, wasn't John. She actually had her sights set on Fleetwood Mac's guitarist. It was Peter Green I had a bit of an eye on. I started talking to John and fell head over heels with him. Christine and John got married just months after they met with Green as the best man. Just a few months later, she quit her own band to be closer to her husband. Her plan was to become a housewife, but in 1970, she joined Fleetwood Mac as a keyboard player and singer. It was a great move for the band, but as it turned out, it was the worst possible thing for her marriage. That same year that Christine joined Fleetwood Mac, Peter Green dropped out. Even though the band lost several members thanks to Christine and all the insane sexual affairs that would soon spoil the group, this time, it had nothing to do with Christine. Green's mental health was in a desperate state after he had a very bad trip with substance use, and he decided to quit the band. In the short time that followed, their singer and guitarist Jeremy Spencer also quit, and the band was forced to fire another guitarist for drinking too much. In 1973, that guitarist's replacement, Bob Weston, was also fired for sleeping around with Mick Fleetwood's wife. The affair happened while the band was on tour. Mick was so shattered by his wife and bandmates' betrayal that he canceled the rest of the tour. This was just the first of a pile of broken hearts and betrayals that the band members would suffer. Around the same time, Christine started having urges of her own. Her marriage had all but deteriorated within the first three years, largely due to the fact that she and John were in each other's faces 24-7. They worked together and lived together, and it all took its toll on their relationship. In her own words, it just blew apart. John was also a heavy substance user and a heavy drinker, and when drunk, he turned into a monster. John is not the most pleasant of people when he's drunk. Very belligerent. I was seeing more Hyde than Jekyll, Christine once said. To scratch her itch, Christine started a flaming hot affair with the band's sound engineer, who was also married, by the way. Needless to say, by 1974, the band was in desperate need of new members, and fast. So, they asked talented guitarist Lindsey Buckingham to join the band. Buckingham agreed, but he insisted on one condition that his girlfriend also joined the band. It was one of the best things that could ever happen to the band because his girlfriend was none other than Stevie Nicks. But Buckingham would later deeply regret this decision, saying that he was stupid to insist that he and Nicks came as a duo. If he could only foresee all the crazy sex affairs and cheating scandals that nearly destroyed the band, then no one would have blamed him if he broke up with Nicks right there and then. But before Nicks could join the band, they had to see if she and Christine would get along and not tear each other's heads off. The two women hit it off right from the start. Christine found Nicks to be funny and nice, and there was no competition between them. Although Nicks was seen as the band's powerhouse female talent, while Christine was considered shy and reserved. And in a sense, that was true. Christine didn't like the spotlight. During performances, she was cast to side with her keyboard, almost out of sight, while Nix, on the other hand, took center stage loud and proud. Nevertheless, Christine resented the fact that she was portrayed as the epitome of rock and roll sanity. She once admitted, I was probably the most restrained, but I was no angel. And she was right, because by the time the band began recording their 11th album, Rumors, everything was in turmoil. Christine had started cheating on her husband again. This time she was sleeping with the band's lighting designer, Curry Grant. It's widely accepted that Christine wrote the song, You Make Loving Fun, about the steamy affair with her new lover. Although, to try to keep the peace between her and her husband, she apparently claimed she wrote it about her dog. Hurt by her constant cheating, Christine's husband embarked on what could be described as a journey of revenge sex. He started sleeping around with young groupie girls, and not just anywhere. He had his own fun adventures at a house that the whole band shared. Mick would later describe it in detail, and it all sounds just a bit too sleazy and almost scary. 
It was like a bordello, basically, with blacked out rooms, thick shag carpets. Things were so bad for the two girls in the band that Christine and Nick's stayed only one night and then moved out into their own apartments. There were girls everywhere and everybody was completely drunk the whole time. Me and Chris decided we couldn't be there. Nick's and Buckingham's relationship was also on the rocks. Things had already been ugly between them for some time and they were hardly on speaking terms. But it was made all the worse when Mick entered the picture and he and Nick's began a steamy affair of their own. All this while Mick was still married to his wife, the one who had cheated on him with the band's guitarist. There were also rumors that Nix herself had yet another lover on the side, Don Henley from the Eagles. Nix and Buckingham took their anger and hate out on each other through their songwriting. She wrote the song Dreams, in which she described their toxic relationship. In turn, he wrote the ever-famous Go Your Own Way. In particular, there is one bit in that song that really hurt Nix. I very much resented him telling the world that packing up, shacking up with different men was all I wanted to do. To add salt to injury, Nix was the one who had to sing the song each time on stage. Every time those words would come out on stage, I wanted to go over and kill him. He knew it, so he really pushed my buttons through that. At last, it wasn't long before Mick started cheating on Nix as well, with Nick's best friend, no less, who was also married. Nix later admitted that she knew right from the start that her affair with Mick was a doomed thing and caused a lot of pain to everybody. Amidst all the chaos, Mick was the one trying to keep the band from falling apart, acting both as the band's leader and its counselor, even though he was just as guilty as everyone else. Christine later revealed in an interview, everybody was pretty weirded out, but somehow Mick was there, the figurehead. We must carry on. Let's be mature about this, sort it out. By now, it seemed that everyone was hopping in and out of bed with each other. Christine's husband even joked about it. About the only people in the band who haven't had an affair are me and Buckingham. Christine had also moved on, again. She found a new lover in Dennis Wilson from the Beach Boys. At least she was now divorced from her husband, but only just. After her tumultuous horror show marriage to John, Dennis was just what she needed, or so she thought. Speaking of the early days of their relationship, Christine said that Dennis awakened things in me I'd been scared to experience and made me feel the extremes of every emotion. But their sweet, wonderful romance soon turned sour when his drinking and substance habits upended his personal life. He was a mess, but he was charismatic, charming, and really handsome. He swept me off my feet big time, and we had a very roller coaster affair for a couple of years. When that roller coaster ride came to a screeching halt, Christine moved on to her next man a Portuguese keyboard player named Eddie Quintella. He played on her 1984 solo album and co-wrote songs with her for Fleetwood Mac, including their hit, Little Lies. The two dated for a few years before tying the knot in 1986, but eventually divorced in 2003 after Christine wanted to live a quiet life out of the spotlight. She had already quit the band in 1998 to move to the English countryside. For nearly 15 years, she remained out of the spotlight, except for a somewhat successful solo career. During that time, she had an accident falling down some stairs and subsequently began popping painkillers to cope. In 2013, she finally overcame an intense fear of flying and rejoined Fleetwood Mac, but it wasn't to last. In 2017, she revealed that she suffered from agoraphobia. According to the Mayo Clinic, it's a condition that involves fearing and avoiding places or situations that might cause panic and feelings of being trapped, helpless, or embarrassed. As a result, Christine retracted from the world once again. On November 30th, 2022, she suffered a stroke after battling a short illness. She passed away at the age of 79. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.